Hey everyone, welcome to Nerd Boys Comic Book Podcast. I'm Marco. We're gonna start it. Oh, Charles! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we started. And today we're gonna cover the DC titles from 2016. The best DC titles of 2016. DC! Yeah, let's get started. Hype. Oh, wait, before Rebirth, there were a few great stories. Yes. One being Superman, American Alien. Didn't get a chance to read it, but I heard great things about it. Oh yeah, it's by Max Landis, and each issue has like varying artists, but it was really good. It was like seven pretty awesome stories of Clark Kent's life. Oh, have you read them? Yeah, I read all of it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, I was like, wait a minute, are we going to talk about some that we both didn't read, but you read them? Yeah. So, scale to one to ten, how great was it? Uh, it's like a nine. Oh, yeah, okay. I'd say solid nine. Is it because it doesn't play into the new 52 universe, or... Yeah. Like, when I saw it at the store, I was like, this is probably, like, a really shitty new 52 <laughs> spinoff story. But then I was reading through it, and I was like, oh, okay, this is, like, its own thing. It's its own separate universe. And it kind of builds on... It, on, it builds its own mythology for Clark Kent. Oh, okay. More of, like, if he grew up during modern times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of... A better story than, like, Man of Steel. Yeah. It, the movie. <laughs> yeah, Man of Steel, the movie, uh, kind of ruined Clark Kent's origins. But this one is really, it brings him back to, like, he's just a guy before he became Superman. He was just a guy. And it goes all the way up until, like, when he moves to Metropolis, okay. gets a job at the Daily Planet, and then he fights, spoilers for the last issue, he fights, he fights Lobo. Oh, wow. Yeah. So is this like a prequel? Like, is this like a year one for New Fifty Two Superman, or this is just like an Elseworlds? Oh, this is an Elseworlds its own thing. Okay, so this would probably be a better Superman story than the New Fifty Two Superman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Max Landis, who is a great writer, by the way, he. Uh, I don't know much about comics, even though I read them now, but I've heard of Max Land Max Landis, so it's just like, oh, okay, now I know this good because I've heard this name before. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. I, he does good stuff. Uh, there's fans who want him to keep building his own DC universe. Like, I think for the type of writer that he is, there's just, for instance, he just needs to come in, do what he do, and then leave. Because the moment he keep writing a continued story, there may be flaws that fall into it, and then it could fall apart. So, I'm going to check this out, but I think it's fine that he's just doing just this. I don't... Let's not nibble and dab into, like, you know, his own universe. Yeah, let's not drag this out too much. No. No. And uh, let's move on to the death of New 52 Superman, the final uh, kind of Superman story. Final days of Superman. Oh, yes. Because it's not the first time we've heard this before, but the first time we actually cared. <laughs> yes. The first time I cared about the New 52 Superman was when he died. Uh think everyone cared when he died it was like but his storytelling was so great except that one story that was uh god what was the name of that book god like uh he pretty much found like this other alien being who was on earth and he was pretty much there helping out uh the, the u.s government and like they was like trying to take some of like you know superman's technology and it was oh, i can't think of the name of that story yeah but that that's kind of how oh, he died though oh superman unchained yeah superman unchained uh Ulysses or something like that? Ulysses? No, we're not talking no. about Marvel. What are you doing? No. What are you doing? I'm trying to think of the guy's name that was the kind of bizarro, not bizarro Superman, but like a, a Superman counterpart. Yeah. In the same solar system as Krypton. I, yeah. I know. I know yeah. Like, that, that book was good. Yeah. Pretty awesome. But this is the only time I cared about New 52 Superman. So. Yeah, I didn't. Like, it's funny because. Like, I didn't, I heard about the New 52. I wasn't reading comics at the time. I heard about it. Like, I seen what was going on. I seen Superman's costume, and I was just like, what the flying fuck is that? Like, what is he wearing? <laughs> like, are people like, it's so cool and edgy. I'm like, no, he has a freaking turtleneck. Give give him, like, you know, a fanny pack. Put a gold chain on him. Guess what? He's the rock now. Like, oh. I, I did not care for that outfit. Which, by the way, I'm going to diverge for a second. Oh, Yes! Dwayne Johnson has two Shazam movies now. What? What? I thought you said talk about Superman's new outfit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. But uh, Shazam, he, or 
Dwayne Johnson, he's going to be in two Shazam movies. The first one is a Black Adam movie, which oh, is the, Black the Adam. Origins. Because <laughs> he's Black Adam. Wait, wait a minute, the Origins of Black Adam? Yeah, the first movie is the origin of Black Adam, and the second movie is Shazam. I'm kind of liking this, like, because at first it's like, okay, yeah, he's going to appear. So, I mean, because it's the, honestly, the only reason they're doing it is because it's the rock playing Black Adam. Oh, yeah. Like, there would be no way in hell that they would do this if it was just like, uh, oh, Vin Vin Diesel. What, Vin Diesel, uh, Bartista, Barista. Oh, yeah, Dave Barista. (laughs) You just see him in the Starbucks apron, you want some coffee? I don't understand metaphors, but I (laughs) can serve you a great latte. But yeah, like, it's because of, like, Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson is the reason why they're doing it. Yeah. And I couldn't imagine him doing it for any other actor. Now that kind of makes me excited because I feel like it could be something bad. Like, it, I mean, right now in the current state of DC Universe, DC Cinematic Universe, I'm not calling it a DC EU, whatever that crap is, but right now the state that it's in, it's very shaky. Oh, like, yeah. I'm because of Suicide Squad, I'm not excited to see, like, Wonder Woman anymore. Justice League, I'm only going to see it just so we can talk about it on a podcast. But, like... Knowing that The Rock is going to be playing Black Adam, first of all, I was going to go and see Shazam anyway, because he's like one of my few favorite characters that I like in the DC Universe. I mean, who didn't want to yell out Shazam and turn to like, you know, the super buff dude who can go toe to toe with Superman? Oh, yeah. But yeah, now I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty excited. And I like to see this origin, see like where was his like fall at, his yeah. great fall into like becoming a villain. Because. There's very few times The Rock has played like a villain. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it sounds like a reboot of the Scorpion King now. Because <laughs> it's an Egyptian guy who was a slave, and then he fought his way to the top, and then he became an asshole eventually. I could sit down, but hey, yeah, you know, we're going to be doing the Egyptian guy. You're in Scorpion King, right? He's like, I, I don't like to talk about that. No, 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 no. Let's, let's bring that back up. He's like, shit, it's too late. I have the contract already. And then we can CGI him to be a giant scorpion monster at the end of the movie. Oh, that would be, dude, I would, I would get up out the fucking theater and walk out. <laughs> That's it. I'd be like, hey, I'll see you guys in the car. They should get Brendan Fraser to be Shazam. What? Is he even still alive? I, I'm sure he is. Yes, I know his career is dead. But I, I feel like like actors. That's the real mummy. <laughs> I feel like actors. The moment that their career die, I'm just like either they died or they just went to another planet. They just proud face of the earth. Yeah. Because I mean, God, I feel bad. Like I enjoyed Brandon. I know the sidetrack. I enjoyed Brandon Fraser and like his movies. To buy me, I mean, the third one it didn't do too well. I mean, what what did you expect with the with the Dragon Emperor? Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, Jet Li was like, oh. Another paycheck. These American people love paying me dollars. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Before we, like, keep going on this thing, let's talk about the thing that got you into reading DC. DC Rebirth. Yes, actually, it's crazy, because DC Rebirth, I know, one, it was, like, a good starting point, and at the same time, Marvel was doing Civil War too. So it's like, okay, I think now would be as great as time as any to just hop right into, like, you know, comic books again. I mean, DC more along the lines more than just Marvel Civil War 2. Because, I mean, DC, they had new number ones. You you can easily, like, go online, check out, like, a lot of videos, like like Comic Story and uh, Comics Explained. Yeah, you know, check out their videos, you know, and just get caught up with, like, where the universe currently is. So I was like, okay, new number ones. Honestly, you don't really need to know much about the characters. Like, if you know who Batman is, you know who Superman is, and just get a little context about, like, what briefly took place like for instance superman i mean superman from a pretty much another like you know post-crisis like pre-52 universe yeah. who's like dropped off into this one just so happened he's married with lois he has a kid that's all you need to know like that right there great concept enjoy superman having more of a, having a child more than i enjoy batman having damien it's kind of weird because it's like uh, Maybe because Batman, you know, you, you don't really... No, you can't see him with a kid. Yeah. Like, I'm still, like, not used to it. But anywho, DC Rebirth, first issue of, like, you know, DC Rebirth, Universe, amazing. That drew me in. If the book wasn't as great as... I mean, that book, I would have to give it a 20 out of 10. That's how that good? That it good? was that good. All right. Because, <laughs> like, I knew, like, 
like Wally, he wasn't in the universe. So it's like, okay, yeah, it was been like what five years of uh, fifty two. Yeah, like five or six. Yeah, so like I'm like, okay, and then I see some black kid who's Wally West. I'm like, you know, I ain't got nothing against this diversity, but like. Where in the hell is the real Wally West? And the way that they play, like, it happened so organically. Where I was like, oh, no, he's trapped to a speed force. It's like, oh, yeah, it'd be perfect for a speedster. Like, if you somehow brought out, like, you know, you changed up, like, Jason Todd. It was like, oh, yeah, Jason Todd, he was just stuck in the speed force. What the fuck was he doing in the speed force? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, you know, when the Joker killed them, Batman, like, knew the only way he could survive was put him in the speed force. I'm like, I'm fucking done. <laughs> Trash this story. But no, with Wally coming back, it was organic. And to show, like, how everything was, like, all taking place in the universe at the same time. And now kind of officially knowing that Dr. Manhattan had some, like, dealings with, like, this missing 10 years. Mm -hmm. Which I say that that is right. Oh, my God. Like, that's crazy. To see, like, this character that no one even thought of, like, ever being in DC Universe. Of course, there's talks and, like, fan theories of, hey, what if, you know, the Watchmen, you know, decide to just be in this universe? <laughs> no, to actually, and not even the whole Watchmen. Like, I'm fine with just there being Dr. Manhattan. You don't have to throw in the rest of the cast. Just Dr. Manhattan playing around with time seems perfect. But now yeah. we, we, we don't know what's going on. But uh, on to the next book. Uh, wait, before we move on, I just want to mention that uh, maybe Rorschach kind of showed up recently. Whoa, what? Yeah, apparently. I'm, I'm, I'm like, arc behind and like, all the books. Like, I haven't finished reading, like, the Venom. The, not the, Venom. <laughs> no, I said not Venom. <laughs> no, the Victim Syndicate. Uh, I am got. Uh, no, I am Suicide in Batman's book. I just started with uh, Multiplicity, which, you know, is kind of weird. And, yes, Lex is on trial. Oh, yeah, the trial of Lex Luthor. He did it. Mm. Well, we don't know that. This could be a good Lex Luthor. I don't trust him. Yeah, but it's either going to be, like, the question, like, the old school question, or mm -hmm. it is, like, legit Rorschach. Oh, wow. Like, they're interchangeable because they're basically the same character, but they might be in the new DC universe. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They're talking in sentence fragments. They have the same suit. It's very, very... <sighs> I want it to be questioned. Only, re only reason I say that is because I don't mind, like, more characters of, like, the Watchmen universe being in the DC universe. But it's like, how in the hell did you get here? Well, of course, Dr. You Manhattan. You died. Like, yes. Dr. Manhattan destroyed like, you. And if you haven't read the book, everyone's seen the movie. He was a goddamn splatter at the end. He was like, do it! Splat! I was like, ooh, yeah. So, so. Good thing that happened in the snow. Like, you know, <laughs> drop some more snowflakes on that. <laughs> I mean, it's great if Dr. Manhattan can bring people back to life. Well, it's not great because then anyone can come back to life. But we don't need that happening. Yeah, that's a step too far. And I'm then, first of all, if he was exploded and brought back to life, that's trauma to like the 10th degree. Like, no one would want to be like, yeah, man, you know, I've actually died before. Like, I got splattered. Like, you remember that? Like, yeah, it's not as bad as you think it is. Like, you're really a fucked up person. Uh, he was fucked up before, but anyway, we are moving on to Superman Rebirth. Yeah, Superman Rebirth. If you're not reading, there's something seriously wrong with you. Yes, I agree completely because it is the best Superman in about five years, yeah. coincidentally. It's the best book with, like, <laughs> DC Rebirth. I'm sorry. Like... When people are like, hey, so what would probably be your like favorite Superman book? I'll be like, oh, I couldn't really give you like an exact story. But now it's just like everything that's coming out of Rebirth is just so good. And it's like, get the get the back issues. Get like, you know, the trade paperbacks from like, you know, Rebirth Superman 1. Because every story is good. Him along with his son, it's just like, okay. It is so natural to see the kind of relationship he has where not only is he teaching his son how to be a superhero, but like how to be a good child, like telling him, hey, these are superpowers that you have. You just can't do whatever you want with him. Like, for instance, I feel like New 52 Superman probably would have told Jonathan, I mean, hey, do whatever you want. OK, it's OK. You can sneak and do this. No one's going to see you move pretty fast. No, like Post-52 Superman is like, you need to be careful 
about the things that you do, okay? Every action has consequences. You always have to be good, even when no one else is looking. And when I seen him totally sudden that, I was like, this is the Superman that I know. Yeah, it's older Superman, so like he's he's maybe in his 30s, like New 52 Superman in his 20s. Yeah. So like 10 years basically like matured him pretty yeah. well. This Superman don't cut no corners. Oh yeah, especially in parenting. Exactly. Because <laughs> you can't cut no corners in parenting. Yeah. Issue seven, it's probably my favorite of the whole year, where they it's, went to the fair. Yeah, actually, that was, that was where I got the quote from, where he was like, you have to do the right thing, even when no one is looking. Yep. Like, that right there was like, you know what? He's a damn good father. I'm sorry, Batman. Give back Damien, put him back in the test tube, wait another ten years. You need some more experience under your belt. Oh, yes. And I don't want to hear, well, you know, he didn't have his parents. God damn it, he had Alfred. Well, I feel like he did a good, he did a good job with Dick. Not so much with Jason. I mean, okay. First of all, Superman was already existing. He was, you know, giving him some pointers here and there. You had Alfred. Like, you know, Alfred, like, Batman and Alfred, it's like mom and dad. Like, Alfred, he's the mom. He's like the caring person who's there, you know, teach you how to be, a, like, caring, how to be sensitive. Batman is just like, no, you just... You just got to do everything my way or it's the highway. And it's like, dude, like, there, there's other ways of doing things. Go into the cave and eat more rats. <laughs> Goddamn rats. <laughs> you ate those rats because you wanted to, Batman. <laughs> and Action Comics, have you been reading it? Uh, Yes. Yeah, like I said, I'm up to the uh, part now where Lex is on trial. And Action Comics, I mean, for them to be pumping out two Superman books, I would think like, okay, maybe I like one better than the other. It's just they're both good. Yes, they're both in, uh, they're pumping out two a month. Yeah, but two issues of both those titles a month. Yeah, so, so you're getting each week of each, the month. Each week you get into bat, like a Batman and the Superman like you know comic. It's crazy. Oh, and I don't know if you heard about the price changes. This oh, is yeah. taking place in yeah. April. But it won't affect the twice monthlies. No, that's the so. great. And I say one. I'm kind of glad it's not because they know people are guaranteed purchasing those uh, books. It's like all the like uh, like monthly books, which I'm kind of sad. Trinity is one of them. Yeah, which we might talk about later. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you reading Trinity? No, I haven't. But I have them all okay. right now, like up to like five. Right. It's yeah. It's pretty good. It's it's more of. The story's not bad, but it's it's like yeah, it's not up there with like Batman and Superman. It's better than Justice League. Justice League is failing spectacularly right now. I know. I was so sad that I wasted like money on three issues. Granted, there were three bucks a piece, but still, yeah, that, that was that, man. That's taco money right there. That's Taco Bell money. Oh no, I was talking about real tacos. Oh not, yeah, not not those tacos with like you know the chicken shell. Mm. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't trying that. That, that seems suspicious. Yeah, that's, that's a suspect. Mm. So is Justice League, though. It's very oh, yeah. suspect. Oh, man, dude. It's like, how can you have a book that is so shitty? And it's a book. Like, that's the one book that I would say, okay, this is going to be successful. You have all the heroes in there. Like, Aquaman, a, a hero that, like, when you just like, oh, okay, Aquaman, he's just a guy who swims in the water and talks to fish. I've checked out some of those books, and they're a lot better than this Justice League book. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, individually, all these stories are great, and it makes sense to put them all together, all the characters together, and have an even greater book, but it's not. No, it is failing miserably. Yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine, who, like, first of all, Williamson, I can just see him now, just like, you know, he's at the office, he's turning in his paper, I know they don't have an office, I know everybody, like, you know, emails stuff, but just imagine he's at the office, and he's looking at the guy who's writing Justice League, and he's like, dude, how you still have a fucking job here, okay? Six issues, people love me. Back then, they didn't know me. Now I'm hot. They all own me. Oh. Ah! <laughs> I, I bet the uh, Justice League writer's like, hey, can I copy your homework? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Johns, let me borrow your homework. Come on, man. Oh, man. No, dude, I don't know where. No, we do, from what I've been hearing, this is like some Mass Effect type shit that they did with like the first arc. They was like, hey, wait a minute. Don't this, don't this look like some crap in a video game? Like, I'll play this game, but I'm going to do my research. And just, and just enough, it was just some research. It was just a complete copy of, like, some characters from Mass Effect. Like, all those weird alien creatures. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like, oh, this is bad. Like, you know, when people can start identifying that, it's like, yeah. Get, get this dude. Kick him out the office. Yeah. He, he, you don't have no job no more. 
I mean, the previous Justice League writer was Jeff Johns, but now he's busy running the movies, kind of. Yeah. Let's see how well that goes. We'll see. We'll see in June and in, uh, what, October? November? November. Yeah. yeah. But Flash. Did you read any of the Flash? Oh, uh, yes. I'm halfway through Speed of Darkness. Oh. Yeah, the uh, current art. But I mean, oh. I'm trying to hurry up and finish because I know coming up soon will be like something that is probably on the list. Wait a minute, it's not on the list. I'm looking at the well, list. No, I have this thing right here that might oh, be oh, oh, over, similar. Overarching DC plot. Okay, yeah. So, yes, I'm reading The Flash because Flash and Batman right now, they done, they going to talk about the pin. No, I'm not talking about the pin that you can get at the Harry Potter store. I'm talking about the button pin with the smiley face with the blood streak on it. Is that a blood streak? Or is That's a like blood a, streak. Okay, I thought it was like just a little dab. Not the kids that have been doing the dab in 2006, but like a dab of blood on it. Yes, it is the comedian's pin. Shit just got real. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm really excited because I don't know if you guys know this, but a certain character named Mr. Oz has Dr. Manhattan prisoner. Okay, so from what I haven't seen it yet myself, but like as I've been hearing around, it's like we think it is him. We don't know for sure. So have you seen it like the uh, book or the... Uh no, this is all hearsay. To me. Oh, okay, yeah, because I know, like, I was hearing someone. They were like, "Oh, we don't, we don't actually know." And I'm like, "Oh, so why is everybody is everybody like hopping on this bandwagon? No one really knows." But I did hear that, like, you know, Tim Drake broke out of you know his like confining cell unit plastic thingy. I find it funny if Tim can get out, <coughs> but not Doctor Manhattan. Well, I mean, Tim, he's like a freaking genius. Like, did you? See, okay, you've read Detective Comics, aren't you? Yeah. He yeah. built the freaking Bat Cave. That's first of all in center of the entire city and it's self-repairing anything is self-repairing i'm just like okay you have a like level of intellect that i cannot fuck with okay i'm not gonna mess with you bro but speak of self healing i need like this cool suit <laughs> no no capes no capes mm. why do heroes still wear capes when they know the dangers I mean, it could be just, like, a really awesome fashion statement. I guess so. Because, I mean, like, with Superman, he really don't need it. Batman kind of helps conceal, like, you know, his identity and makes him look cool. It'd be so weird if they didn't have... No, I take that back. Superman with the black suit, had no cape, looked like a badass. That's... He, I hope they do that in the Justice League movie. I hope. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, like, I want them to. I mean, you know, Henry Cavill, 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 yeah, however you pronounce his last name. He has been, like, teasing it every so often. I'm like, okay, let's just see it. Hashtag bring back the mullet. Oh, yeah, mullet for Superman. Oh, I wonder how, like, <laughs> I wonder if, like, they've been hearing, like, yeah, sorry, you got to wear the mullet. He's like, I'm not wearing a goddamn mullet. Like, well, we can always find a replacement. <laughs> like, who? <laughs> you should see, like, The Rock come in here. Like, he's already been casting as Shazam. Like, he could be Superman if you want to. Just the goddamn Rock. Yeah, I mean, when he came back to life, he just happened to be, like, really swole. Yeah, you know, got, you know, he was he was in the sun, so that's where he got his tan from. <laughs> oh, man. But what was the next thing we were going to talk about? Trinity. Yes, Trinity. Uh, Trinity is good. It's weird that it's a monthly, but it's okay because of all the other titles that they're pumping out. Like, it's one of those, like, okay, from all the serious things that's going on in every other book, it's nice to have this one story where it's not the Justice League, because sadly that book is, like, pathetic, but it's just, you know, the top three, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. And so, like, right now they're dealing with this whole situation of, like, them, like, re somewhat, like, going through a journey of their past of, like, what made them who they are now? Like, I haven't, I don't know if the uh, issue five is out yet. I know issue four, they were in Themyscira and dealing with Wonder Woman's past. And it was just like, okay, this is kind of nice, you know, to kind of take a walk through memory lane. Like, for instance, uh, Superman, he was able to, like, you know, see his younger self, see his dad again. Of course, you know, his dad is like, you know, he passed on. Mm -hmm. And then well, for Batman, it was sad. Like, you know, there's only so many times you can see your parents getting shot in the alley after seeing Zorro. Like, first of all, you came out of a shitty movie. Then you get shot in the alley. Like, Well, well no, it's not the Antonio Banderas story. Oh, okay. Woo! <laughs> Man, I ain't got nothing against Antonio Banderas. I mean, Don, wait a minute, what's that Don of the Dead? What do you mean? The zombie movie. Dawn of the Dead? No. I don't think he was in that. No. Well, no, there was another zombie movie where he, it was like him and, uh, what's his name? What's his name? He's now a director. 
Robert Rodriguez? No, not Robert Rodriguez. It's the other one. Quentin Tarantino? Yes, Quentin Tarantino. Okay. I, like, it's weird, because I know his name, but I'm like, it's stuck at the end of my tongue. Pretty much, they were like, I guess there were two brothers. They had went to a bar. They didn't know the oh, bar Oh, that's was... from Dust Till Dawn. That's, okay. That's vampires. Oh, zombies, vampires. They all need to die. We're going to build a wall. <laughs> we got to keep them zombies and vampires out. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were Mexican vampires, so it makes sense to build a wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, then they could fly over the wall. Mm-mm. We got to build a wall that's even bigger. Yeah. Got to keep them out and those goddamn titans. Just build a dome over America. <laughs> we'll be fine. Alaska, Hawaii, you're on your own. <laughs> We're like, oh, shit. That is so bogus. we be like, forget you guys. Forget you're you, Moana. <laughs> See you later, polar bears, Eskimos. Oh, man. They could, they could build some igloos, living those. It's really not that cold in Alaska. All right. It's not. But weren't we talking about comics? Yes. I like how we just sidetracked. All the time. That's, that's, that's if what Andrea we do. If not here, we'll just sidetrack all the time. <laughs> She'd be like, what are you guys talking about? Like, sorry. Polar bears. They had lightsabers. Shit got real. <laughs> She'll be offended because uh, she lived in Alaska for quite a while. Quite some time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A few months. Yeah. I, you know, I would like to live there for like, what is it, like the three months where it's just all daylight? Yeah. Yeah, like I wouldn't mind that. Like, you know, if it's like three months where it's just all darkness, I'm like, nope, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, these vamp- the vampire wall isn't over here, so... Oh, dude, like, he, I'm telling you, seeing that movie 30 Days of Nights, that freaked me the hell out. I was like, no, I'm A-okay. I gotta have, like, you know, UV, like, flashlights. This ain't happening. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But yeah, back to comics. DC Comics. The ones who actually winning. They, they won 2016 when it comes down to comics. Oh, yes, definitely, because Marvel was sucking it all year long, but DC... Like, from May to December, it was perfect. I'm making this prediction right now, and I know it's kind of early, but I feel like DC is going to win 2017 when it comes down to comics. Yes. I mean, Marvel has nothing, really. Yeah, like, it, even if they do come out, like, with a good, like, you know, a good, like, team event, first of all, they need to shut out all their events. Like, there's books that's coming out. Like, for instance, uh, I was looking at, like, no, on the website, comic book website. It's an average comic book website where it tells you, like, what issues are coming out in, like, the next week. And they were like, oh, yeah, Monsters Unleashed. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, oh, it's this one event with all the... Don't care. This is ex- that's the conversation I had with myself in my head. Don't care. I'm tired of Marvel and these silly events. Like, just tell a good story. Build up some character development and leave it at that. Right now, we have all these new characters and we really don't know anything about them. Like, Sam, all we know is, is like, yeah, he's been searching for his dad. Okay, Richard Ryder is back for anyone who probably did know. And... That's going. That's going kind of. You know, it's going at a. You know, a good pace. Like Richards, he's back. He's now learning. It's like a man out of time, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah, because like and like most like you probably seen it on the web where he's like, oh, okay. So what's going? On? So you guys are Avengers. Like you know what happened to like you know Captain Marvel? She was like, and Miss Marvel was like, oh, I miss Marvel. Like wait, wait, wait a minute. So what happened to Captain Marvel? Did he die? She was like, no, she's still alive. She. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. This dude been gone for quite some time. Oh, yeah, he's been gone since uh, Annihilation. Yeah. It's like mid-2000s, like 2005? No, actually 2006 when Civil War was taken. It was running along with Civil War. Oh, yeah. yeah. When all the space people were fighting, Yeah, all the heroes were fighting yeah, each other. Yeah, because heroes, you know, they was having this petty fight while the universe was, like, falling to shit. And he called them, and they was like, oh, wait a minute. You're not, are you registered? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, dude, like, oh, my God. When you get a chance to check out Annihilation, it is, it, like, to see all the craziness that take place in that, then see how, like, Civil War, I could probably say within, like, the past, like, maybe even 15 years, one of the best stories, not Civil War two, regular Civil War, one of the best stories and crossovers that have ever happened to Marvel. Annihilation, because, like, no one really cares about what happened in the space, it comes to show you, like, the universe is about to be destroyed, and humans are dealing with their pettiness on Earth about who registered with what freaking superpowers. Like, it don't matter. The universe is about to end. We need to band together. No, you're, you're not registered. You know what? Fuck you guys, okay? I got a universe to save. Yeah, and then for the following three years, it's Tony being like, sign this paper, please. Yes. I'm going to arrest you if you don't sign this paper. Until, like, Thor came along. He was like, well, you know, I need to register you. Thor was like, get the fuck out of my face. You made a clone of me. Like, <laughs> yeah. did I sign for the... Did you sign to take my hair? Oh, man. Oh. Dude. 
I'm sorry, but it's like when you piss off Thor, it's just like, yeah, you, you don't want to mess with this man. <laughs> you pick up your prizes at the door, Tony. He can't. He's in a coma. <laughs> oh man. No, I'm sorry. During that period, I mean, now, yeah, he ain't picking up nothing. No. In, until they need him again. Until uh, Infinity War. Yeah. Then they'll bring him back. Yeah. It was like, oh, you know, Tony, he's miraculously healed from this coma. Like, hmm, just so happened Infinity War is coming down. I set my alarm for when the third Avengers movie came out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, it's going to be the third one. It's, cr- man, it's, it's crazy. But we're on DC. Sadly, yeah. we can't really talk about their movies. Mm, no, it's been a sucky year for DC movies. You know what sucks, though? The fact that, like... I'm more excited about, like, you know, what, like, big event that's about to happen to DC Comics than I am at the fact that this probably may be, like, the first real Justice League movie. Yeah, it is the first Justice League movie. But it's sad. Like, there's no build-up to this. No, like, everything has been, like, crammed in every other movie. Like, I'm sorry. I understand, like, Marvel's making all this good money. Take your time. That's what DC should have done. Everybody should have got an origin story except Cyborg. He's not fucking important. No one cares about, you know, throw him into like a Flash. Like, you know, either a Flash or like a Batman. Batman would have been perfect. You could have had two Batman movies, solo Batman movies. And like in the background, you could have been like, oh, yeah, you know, I know about that kid. That's the Stone Kid, right? Don't he play for like the Gotham City, like I think Pirates or whatever. Something. Yeah. Like, and then like, you know. Throw a little hits here and there. He don't need his own movie. Everybody should have had a solo movie and then build up to Justice League. Yeah. I mean, like how Marvel did for, like, the Avengers. But, I mean, I don't want to throw that out there. I still think Batman should have had his own movie before yeah. Batman v Superman. Even then, you shouldn't have these two fighting. There's no reason why they need to fight. Like, why? Yeah, take the V out of that and just make it Batman Superman. World's finest. World's finest. World star. I would say somebody should have yelled that while that was happening, but I'm like, nah. Superman was pretty much tossing Batman around like you know, sack of potatoes. I mean, he he kind of let him win. He was like, I see this grenade coming to me. The second one, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him have an advantage. Like, he had that Vegeta moment. (laughs) Like, I'm I'm gonna just let them get a little bit stronger so I can really have a challenge. Like, no, you killed him when you have the chance. No, give Batman a Zenzu bean, and I'll fight him again. No. And this movie was just so horrible. And we haven't even talked about Suicide Squad yet. Dude, I don't even want to. I'm done. All right, let's stop. (laughs) Movies bad, comics good. Comics great, movies, they shouldn't exist. Yeah. Go back to the drawing board. Yeah. You know, concentrate all your money into, like, animated movies. Oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah. I think they can do better with animated movies. And it sucks. Like, even the animated shows, they're just like, oh, let's throw some pennies at that. Yeah. Teen Titans Go, here you go. And it's to the point where you're Warner Brothers slash DC. You can literally take these animated movies, pump in as much cash as you want, and put them in theaters and see how people will react to that. They're so worried about losing money. Like... See, like, of course they know just all fans love their, like, you know, animated movies. They love that universe. I say, given another, like, maybe two, three years, start taking, diff- like, different stories of Rebirth and start putting them as animated movies. Oh, yeah. Like, even uh, Justice League Dark, I'm sure it's going to get, like, a limited theatrical release, but it's still going to be, like, making a million dollars at least. Yeah. I mean, probably one night, even a million more. dollars, it's going to be great. Probably even more. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of comic book fans out there. And because of, like, you know, this whole, like, big boom of, like, comic book culture, more fans are growing by the second. Like, there's people who I've, like, could never imagine, like, I, I work as a merchandiser, so I'm in different stores. So there's, like, people who, who you would never think be like, hey, yeah, man, have you heard about that new, you know, like, for instance, somebody asked me today, you heard about that new Power Rangers movie? I'm like, what? Like, what? Like, yeah, man, it looks exciting. What about Logan? I'm like, do you even know who Logan is? Yeah, this Wolverine. Chink, chink. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm so done. Well, it's Snick, Snick, but <laughs> no, I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> they said chink, chink. I was just like, well, you know, they, they halfway right. Oh, well, Wolverine's not exactly Asian, but okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> I went to China that one time. Or, I mean, Japan. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man. I still would like to make a trip there. But yeah, like seeing how everyone, like even my own mother, like she she's into like the comic book, you know, well, because she had two sons who was into it. So she kind of, you know, got into it to see how we are. But even then, she was like, I remember I was a conversation with her last night. And she was like, Charles, why didn't you warn me? And I was like, warn you about what? She was like, I seen that X Men movie. I'm like, oh, Days of Future Past. She's like, no, Apocalypse. I'm like, ugh. I'm so sorry, mother. She was like, I didn't know what was going on. I just like, oh, is this how he got bald? I'm like, yes, mom. That's how he got bald. She was like, oh, but I remember in the cartoon. I'm like, I know, mama. I know. I know, mom. It's, it's going to be okay. Like, we, we could do, hopefully Fox can do better. I just hope they toss out, like, all of, like, the rights of X-Men. Oh, yeah. Hopefully they will. I'm sure. It's funny. I'll mention it during our Logan thing that we do later. Mm-hmm. But, uh. No, I'll save it for the Logan thing. Okay. <laughs> we'll have a whole episode for Logan and Power Rangers. Yeah, I'll give you my two cents about that. But that'll be in the next podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of Power Rangers, DC is doing a uh, collaboration with Boom Studios, and we're getting Power Rangers versus Justice League. Have you seen the freaking variants? I love the variants. They're awesome. Like, you know this property is huge. Like, I think I'm, you know Miguel, the guy who's in our Super Friends, like, uh, Facebook group? Yeah. He posted up a picture today. You got to add him as a friend. Okay. It was all the variants of, like, the Rangers, like, just, like, from neck to waist, holding their helmets. And it, the artwork looked so beautiful. He had five-ish, like, all of them, all the different Rangers. And I'm like, this is, first of all, that's five, like, this five variants of, like, what, the first comic? Yeah. Like, there's only the first issue that came out for uh, Power Rangers vs. Justice League. Well, Is no, it? that might be the variant for the uh, the first Power Rangers comic. Oh, okay. I know the variants for this one are, like, a Ranger and a uh, Justice Leaguer okay. on, the, on the covers. Yeah, I mean, just to see how, like, first of all, I know this is a cash grab for, like, boom. Like, you know, to, like, try to make some money since there's a Power Rangers movie. But the fact that, like... Power Rangers is blown up again, comic-wise, telling stories that are amazingly well, and then combining them with the Justice League, like, it's a current Justice League, not that new 52 BS. Yes. Oh, this is exactly Rebirth costumes, like Batman, Superman, everyone's got their Rebirth costume, and it's a better Justice League story than the Justice League right now. Whoever's writing Justice League, like, I'm sorry, you, you need to just, like, go ahead and run that, like, bath water, lay in the tub. Get your razor blades, like, you know, just, dude. We're not condoning that a man kill himself, but no. we are going to kick sand in his face because he's not doing a good job. <laughs> no, he's just going to come home, his wife just sitting there like, you know, at first I thought it was just me. And I've been telling all my friends, hey, buy that new Justice League comic, it's amazing. But I read Justice League, you know, versus Suicide Squad. The book is amazing. I read the first issue of, like, Power Rangers versus Justice League. The book is, it's it makes me want to cry. Your bath is running. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, babe, like, no, no, I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. Your bath is running. Yeah. But Power Rangers versus Justice League, it's like a really unexpected, really good first issue. I'm really happy for that. Should go toss the toaster in the, in the tub. No, the man should not kill himself. I don't no, know I didn't the, say, no, I, I didn't say no. Is, but. Dude, like, no. They, to me, I put like this. They're giving you a book. You're supposed to, like, put your heart and soul into it. And, like, it's one of those things where I feel like it does fit, like, Justice League does fit to, like, the continuity. But, like, you can kind of do whatever you want with it, but don't stray off too much. But it's like, what? He should have did some serious research. Some serious research. Because I feel like all the other individual books will have something to do with, like, what's going on. And, like, the uh, other, like, with what's going on with, like, the current story. And that, like has nothing else to do with what's going on with, like, rebirth issue. Hmm? Oh, wait. wait what, what, what? Oh, no, I was just saying, like, you know, just as Lee, how bad it is. Oh, yeah. But, you know, okay, so you heard about the Hanna-Barbera uh, comics, right? The uh, DC yes. ones? I thought they were all going to be, like, pretty shitty. I mean, you have Scooby Apocalypse, which is, like, Scooby-Doo versus a monster apocalypse. And they have, like, Wacky Raceland, which is Mad Max meets cartoons. And I heard those two are actually, like, pretty good. Yeah. But I think one of the best ones is Flintstones. Now, stay with me. Like, hold on, man. Are you reading it? Are you reading the Flintstones? No, but I want to read Flintstones because I, I saw some of the things in it. 
and they're actually pretty decent, pretty well, good. What are some of the things? Like, throw, I mean, throw something away, because I, I gotta hear this. So it's kind of staying socially relevant to today, but it's still like Stone Age period, so it's like, monogamy is a taboo in like caveman times, because it's all like, all these women and men, like, kids have a million fathers and a million mothers, like, they're all being raised, but like, Fred and Wilma, they're they're together, they're married, they're monogamous, like, that's taboo, like, there's people who look at them and it's like, go back to the sex cave, you, you monsters. <laughs> what? Like, it's kind of like an allegory for, like, gay marriage, kind mm-hmm. of. And there's even a gay couple, like, there's Adam and Steve. Oh, Get wow. It? Yeah, like, there's a couple named Adam and Steve who actually helped raise Fred uh, in his tribe. Is Barney and Betty in it? I don't know. Like, I, I'm just, like, hearing okay. these things. I'm like, I'm really interested in this Flintstones. And, like, Adam and Steve, like, there's a there's a group of cavemen who, like, marry. Like, there's this whole marriage thing. And, like, well, marriage is for breeding. Like, it's a man and a woman. Why do Adam and Steve want to get married? And it's like, well, marriage is more than just about breeding. You don't understand. And Fred is, like, making this argument. And it's pretty interesting. Like, I, I would want to read it. Okay, you, you really let me know. Because... I'll get the trade paperback when it comes out. Okay. I'm going to have to glimpse through it because I feel like Hanna-Barbera, like, cartoons that I grew up with, it's like they're classic. They should be done with. Like, don't 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 try to take them and put a twist on it. But we could talk more about that later when it comes down to that Power Rangers trailer. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's definitely just put a lid on that for right now, and we'll come back to that in the next episode. All right, guys. This is the end of the podcast. We'll see you later. Peace. Signing out.